Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Today, all of our guests, including Farhan Lalji of TSN, are brought to you by the Alberni Power and Marine RPM Group, located in Port Alberni. Alberni Power and Marine is one of Vancouver Island's most trusted boat dealerships, the largest Mercury Marine dealership in Canada. Their service team just won for the fourth straight year. A customer satisfaction index score above the national average, that's difficult to do. Congratulations. Make your appointment today for the 2022 boating season at albernipowermarine.com. We got Farhan? We're all good? Farhan Lalji well, joining us now from TSN. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good. The hat. What, what, what do we got there? What's on the hat? Yeah, bad hair day. Getting a haircut okay. tomorrow. And plus, any chance I get to support my good friends at Kids Sport, I got to do it. So, Kids oh, good. Sport hat. Uh, go. uh, Chris Wilson and company. Good good for yeah. you, Farhan. I have a bad hair day. I should be wearing a hat all, all the time. It's at some point, I'm going to give in and, and get your hair and, you know. Like I'm fighting it. Wow. Yeah, you, you, so. you, you don't you don't want that. Uh, Lions play their season opener Saturday. BC plays against uh, Edmonton. We had Amar Doman on the show yesterday. Ticket sales have been excellent. They're talking about opening the uh, Upper Bowl. How do you explain that, Farhan? Well, I think the new owners done a really good job of making sure the organization is a little more connected to the local fan base, right? And I think that's what local ownership does, and not just local ownership, but local involved and invested and connected ownership. So. I, I think it's good. But here's the thing. It is really important that, A, Saturday's game be entertaining, and, B, that the mm. BC Lions win. Yeah. And, and I say this because, like, I can go all the way back to Murray Pezum owning yes. this team. Yes, and, I know where you're and going. Build yeah. up, build up games happen, and all this hype gets generated around a game, and then the game itself lays an egg, right? So, so look, we, we don't want to go there and assume that's going to happen. I think the Lions are going to win on Saturday. I, you know, I really like what I saw in the last preseason game, but – you know, with all that uh, is happening as far as the crowd uh, and everything like that and just the excitement now, because you know how these things work, right? Like, it, it all kind of perpetuates itself. So now, a couple of days ago on your show, mm -hmm. the owner says, hey, we might open the upper deck, and everyone pays attention and says, what? You mean it's, like, yeah. sold out? Yeah. You know, and then more people want to go, right? So yeah. uh, it, they could be a pretty good crowd here, and hopefully the, the entire event, including the football part of it, delivers. Uh, Amar Doman yesterday also talked about uh, the possibility of a new practice facility. We mentioned yeah. the Opera Bowl, all of that. Just your read on the job that Amar is doing so far as Lions owner. You touched on it. Well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think he's checking all the boxes right now, and he's doing, doing a fabulous job. And, you know, the bar wasn't high, right? And, and I say that because David Braley, well, he was an exceptional owner in terms of making sure the bills got paid and things got done professionally internally right i mean you know we, we've all talked about the lack of promotion and and dollars being given on that side of the organization to push it forward right so we all wanted this and certainly so far he's delivering right i mean just doing the little things right he talked about on your show about how he's providing a little bit more to help subsidize some of the concessions because he knows that the stadium can only do so much based on food costs and you know staffing prices and things of that nature so he's doing a little bit more, right? And and every one of those little things matters because it adds to the experience and, you know, adds to the just connectivity of the fan base. So it's been great so far, right? And there's going to be ups and downs along the way, right? Success with the with the team, a lack of success with the team, you, you name it, whatever's going to happen at some point, there will be some ups and downs. There'll be more tests of ownership in those moments. But so far leading into this, I think it's been great. I know they're getting closer on a president, right? And uh, the names that I'm hearing are in, that are in the midst of it, or, uh, the, that are in the uh, the final stages of it, I think are quality, quality people. So I think that's just going to add another layer on the very good ownership. Uh, okay, let's get on to the field now. You got uh, the Canadian quarterback who last game was great. Uh, also the second one as, uh, as well. He had a great second half. Uh, what kind of team are we looking at for the Lions right now? Well, I think we're looking at a team that's going to be as good as the line can take it, right? And I think that's been a real concern over the last couple of years. So much has been put on to Nathan Rourke, and, and that's fine, right? But understand this team missed the playoffs the last two years under Michael Riley. And why is that? It's because he got hit too much. It's because they couldn't mm. generate enough pressure yeah. on the passer, right? And, you know, and just to quickly digress, the whole thing on, on Nathan Rourke, 
any questions people have, it's not about him being Canadian. He might get more attention because he's Canadian, but any questions come as a result of the fact that he doesn't necessarily have a lot of experience. But everything we've seen from him has been good. They've got dynamic people in the receiving core. On, on the defense, in terms of their linebackers and defensive backs, they're exceptional. The questions are going to come at both the offensive and defensive lines. And I think if I think they're better, are they enough better to take that next step and get into the playoffs in the West? But I, I don't think Nathan is going to be the problem if there are problems offensively. I think it's going to be a lack of ability to protect him. Again, first quarter of that last preseason game, I thought they looked really good, both in pass protection and in run blocking. Second quarter, it kind of went meh a little bit. I don't think you can overplay what you saw in the second half because it's all backups. But, um, you know, I like what I've seen from Nathan so far. I think he'll deliver. Just give him some time. All right. Who, who's going to be in the Great Cup? Who, who are the teams to watch? Well, you know, I, I think the East is going to be wide open. A number of my colleagues on TSS preview show yesterday said Ottawa is going to be in the Grey Cup. And, you know, it's entirely possible. I think when you look at Hamilton and the changes, especially offensively, I think they might take a bit of a step back. Toronto won a lot of close games last year. Are, are, is that sustainable? What are we going to get from Vernon Adams in the East? So I think, they, I think the East is completely wide open. And I think in the West, yeah, Winnipeg's lost a couple of guys in the, on the offensive side of the ball, but I still think you've got the best O-line in the league and you've got Zach Hilaris, and that's going to be able to get them to a point where they're going to be able to contend. Um, so I've got Winnipeg and Calgary in the West, and I don't know who I've got in the East, guys. Give me one more day. Okay, okay, season opener. Ah, uh, come tomorrow. on. I'll make my picks before the game. Isn't the uh, opener you know tonight? I'll, uh, the opener is tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Okay. Openers are tomorrow night. Uh, Montreal and Calgary is tomorrow night. That's the first one. I'll okay. tell you, okay, I'll throw it out there. I will take Calgary to get back into the Grey Cup game, and I will take Ottawa with my two good friends, Paul Lapolis <laughs> and Mike Benavides, to find a way to get that team into the Grey Cup. There you go. There you go. Former TSN a- employees. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, uh, one yeah. one more, Farhan. I understand that you've weighed in on our poll question, and it has to do with the Lions news that broke uh, yesterday. The poll question, we're going to introduce it in the next segment, but where would you rather watch a game in, a, in an arena, in a stadium, upper bowl, lower bowl? Well, it depends on the sport. And I say this because in hockey, you want to be in the lower bowl because it's so fast and it's so physical the lower you sit, the more you can appreciate it, truly, right? And, mm. um, yeah, row one, you know, you might not see both goals properly, but row one, you can appreciate the speed and physicality better than you can in the upper deck. Football, I'm a coach's, I'm a coach. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a coaching geek. So I want to watch from up above and get a good overview. I used to have season tickets before my media dates. Mm-hmm. I paid for them, unlike you. Uh, and Ooh, what, I would what? sit, I would sit, you're the cheapest man on television, admit it. That's true. Uh, I would sit in the upper deck, row one of the upper deck, right in the middle of the end zone. So Mm -hmm. section 51 back in those days, I think it's 351 or 451 now, but right in the middle of the end zone, row one of the upper deck, and I could just see every play develop. So the coach geek in me, upper bowl for football, uh, speed and physicality, lower bowl for hockey. You took a shot at my hair and my cheapness, and you're bang on with both. I will will buy you dinner and uh, and a haircut soon. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Absolutely. We'll talk. Farhan, thanks All for right, this. You, buddy. you bet. All right. Again, Farhan wearing a kid's sport hat again.